In this video, we're going to talk about Parabola and its features. First, let me remind you that Parabola is a graph of a quadratic function. Here's the general form of a quadratic function. It's y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are some real numbers. For example, if we let a be equal 2, b equal 3, and c equal negative 4, then that's the quadratic function that we're going to obtain. y equals 2x squared plus 3x minus 4. If we let a be equal negative 3, b equals 0, and c equal 1, then we're going to produce the following quadratic function. y equals negative 3x squared plus 1. So since b equals 0, and 0 times x is 0, this quadratic function does not have a middle term. And finally, if we let a be equal 1, but both b and c are zeros, then we're going to end up with the basic quadratic function y equals x squared. And for all those functions, no matter what values we use for a, b, and c, their graphs will be parabolas. Parabola is a u-shaped graph. Now the values of the numbers a, b, and c will determine where this parabola is positioned in the x-y plane, how wide it is, and which direction it opens. So let's talk about important features of parabola. The first one, it's direction. The graph of a quadratic function can be either upward parabola, or we say that it opens up, or it can be a downward parabola, in which case we say that it opens down. I'm sure you can see the difference between those two and guess where these names come from. Now, in which case parabola opens up and in which case it opens down? Well, that depends on value of a. a is the number that stands in front of x squared, so it's a coefficient in this term. Now, if that coefficient is positive, here it says a is greater than 0. Again, it means that it's a positive number. Then the graph of that function will be an upward parabola. However, if a is a negative number, in other words, less than 0, then the graph of such function is a downward parabola. Now, to illustrate this by examples, let me add the quadratic functions that correspond to these two graphs. So the function for the first graph is y equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. Also, what is the value of a in this function? We said it's a coefficient of x squared, right? But there is no number in front of x squared. Well, you probably remember that if there is no number in front of the variable, it means that the coefficient is 1. We just don't have to write it. So a is positive 1. Well, parabola opens up. The second example, here's the function that corresponds to the graph. It's y equals negative 2x squared minus 8x plus 1. What is a in this example? Well, it's negative 2. So coefficient of x squared is the negative number. As we can see, parabola opens down. Another important feature of parabola is called vertex. Vertex is the lowest point of the parabola if parabola opens up, or the highest point of the parabola if parabola opens down. Since vertex is a point, it means that we can describe it by providing its coordinates. So vertex is described in terms of coordinates x and y. So for my examples here, the coordinates of the vertex of the first graph is 1, negative 4, and the coordinates of the vertex for the second graph are negative 2, 9. Next important feature of parabola is the axis of symmetry. You probably already noticed that parabola has symmetric shape. Well, any symmetric object has what we call axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry is the vertical line that passes through the vertex of the parabola. And if you imagine folding the parabola along this axis of symmetry, well, then both sides of the parabola should match. So how do we describe the axis of symmetry for the given parabola? Well, as any vertical line, we're going to describe it by its equation. And the equation of the vertical line has the following form. So it's written here for this first example. X of symmetry is going to be a line, vertical line, that has equation x equals 1. So once again, every vertical line has equation of this form x equals a number. Well, what kind of number? The number at which this vertical line crosses the x-axis. In this case, it's 1. Well, but we also know that axis of symmetry goes through the vertex. It means that that number 
at which the axis of symmetry crosses the x-axis is the same as the x-coordinate of the vertex. And that we can use as a shortcut for writing the equation of the axis of symmetry. So if we know the coordinates of the vertex, 1, negative 4, then the axis of symmetry is simply equation x equals, and then you write the same number as the x-coordinate of the vertex. Let's check that for the second example. So the vertex of this problem is negative 2, 9, and the axis of symmetry is that vertical line that has equation x equals negative 2. So this is the shortcut of writing the equation of the axis of symmetry, x equals, and then you use the number that corresponds to the x-coordinate of the vertex. Next important feature of a parabola is the y-intercept. The y-intercept is the point where this parabola crosses the y-axis. So try to remember the connection, y-intercept, y-axis. So y-intercept is always on the y-axis. Since y-intercept is the point, we're also going to describe it by its coordinates. So in this example, the coordinates of the y-intercept are 0, negative 3. And it's going to be important to note that any point on the y-axis, no matter where I place it, will always have x-coordinate 0. Now we can see that for any parabola, its y-intercept will always have the x-coordinate 0. And that's how we can write it in general. So it's going to be 0, comma, well, some kind of number. And once again, that's the number where the parabola crosses the y-axis. Finally, we're going to talk about x-intercepts. Now, x-intercept or intercepts have the same idea as y-intercepts, so these are the point or points where a parabola crosses the x-axis. But when it comes to x-intercepts and parabolas, there are different cases that we can observe. One of them is when parabola crosses the x-axis at two places. So that means that there are two x-intercepts. In this case, their coordinates are negative 1, 0, and then 3, 0. Well, it's also possible that parabola crosses, or in this case, I should say, touches the x-axis only at one place, and that means that there's only one x-intercept, and this is how parabola has to be positioned for that to happen. Of course, it can also be a downward parabola. In this case, it's going to be below the x-axis and just touching the x-axis at one point. Well, the x-intercept for this parabola is 5, 0. And again, there's only one. And then finally, parabola may be positioned in such a way that there are no x-intercepts. Well, if it's above the x-axis, and as, as you can see, it's not crossing x-axis at all. So um, I have to say that it has to be upward parabola and it should be above the x-axis, right? That's the station where it's not going to cross the x-axis, no x-intercepts. Or it can be downward problem down here, but then it should be below the x-axis. That's going to be another case where you will not see x-intercepts. So these are three cases, two x-intercepts, one x-intercept, or no x-intercepts. And that's how parables have to be positioned. And then the last thing that I want to point out is that when we observe the x-intercepts, then since those points are sitting on the x-axis, their y-coordinates will be zeros. So notice how for all those x-intercepts, the second coordinate, the y-coordinate is zero. So these are the main features of the graph of a quadratic function that we also call parabola.